sit back and enjoy an old classic, one of my favorite stories. I, 43M, need to send a letter of thanks to Dyson. I discovered my wife, 49, of 17 years, 18-month affair when I updated our fan filter on the app it uses. Like the title says. Sorry, I'm posting from my phone. History, married 17 years with no children of our own. She's been divorced once and had two daughters that I helped to raise, now 28, 23, prior to our marriage. We've really only had minor bumps and issues, in my opinion. We've had an open-door type of communication with each other. Whether it be work issues and venting, sexual issues, or just how we are feeling. Often we will just talk on the couch about life and philosophy in general. I felt that we had a great connection and a pretty heavy, fulfilling sex life. We are both in good shape and maintain a healthy lifestyle. I work in the medical field and due to things being what they are, have been putting in a decent amount of overtime over the past five months. She works in a legal consultancy and has been at WFH for the past five months. This has made things a bit distant, but on our days off we are tight. Changed the filter on the Dyson fan in our bedroom last night. I asked my wife if I could use her phone to update the app, in order to reset the change filter alert. Mine was on the charger next to the front door. I noticed she had put on a pattern on lock, and, kinda wanted to ask her what that was about. As I was finding the app on her phone, a notification for Snapchat popped up. My stomach dropped immediately as I read the small tag. I'll bring the special toy. It said. My brain understood the words, but my mind just stopped functioning. She asked what was the matter after I guessed several minutes of me just sitting and staring at the bedroom fan. My wife has an obligatory quarterly out-of-town meeting that puts her two states away for five days every business quarter. I knew it was about this coming trip on Monday. I've perused Reddit for years anonymously. I've read hundreds of stories that began like this and never once have I thought about it being me that would sit on my bedroom floor and be in such a cold, dumbfounded state. I recovered and said, oh just getting info about the IP and router. That's how the fan communicates through the app. I have a Chromebook that she logged into Facebook yesterday. I took a week's vacation on short notice. My supervisor is a cool chick and once I laid out what I may have discovered and have to do. I'm going to need time off. I've been up all night reading her chats. She left to go to the office just now and I made sure the Google location history was on and found my phone was active. I'm so suspicious of everything she does now I can't look at myself in the mirror. She doesn't know I saw the message notification. I logged onto the messaging system that Verizon uses and have signed in under her number and name. There are at least 15,000 that date back to February of last year, messages, memes, flirty pics, and some X-rated ones too. She stopped texting him this way about three months ago. Didn't stop texting him, but stopped using the messaging app through Verizon. I'm guessing they switched to Snapchat because it's discreet. I'm not on any social media in any way shape or form. I am clueless. I just figured out that you can't log into Snapchat through Facebook. But, it just takes an email and password. And she has used this Chromebook to do that. Hell, she used it just three nights ago lying in bed next to me rubbing my back while I went to sleep, she messaged him and sexed him lying next to me. It's a younger man from work. He is married and has three young children. He and his wife have Facebook. I've met him twice. Shook his fucking hand. I'm at a complete loss again and have paced slash wandered my house, that I custom built for her, for hours. I almost can't feel anything. What little that I'm processing is just white hot rage. I logged on Snapchat and there it all was. I have called my best friend who has been divorced three times. Don't get me started on his partner picker, he recommended a vicious lawyer. I plan on recording slash saving everything. There's pics of them fucking. I'm sure her phone or his has video. I desperately want this to be a bad dream. She said terrible things about me. 
She's told them my insecurities. She's told them I love you. They have made no long-term plans so this feels like a purely sexual relationship. It almost makes it better, but also makes it so much worse. Like she's literally throwing away our life for this. She knows cheating is an absolute deal breaker for me. Our usual routine on the day she leaves for her meetings is I take her to the airport and drop her off with a long goodbye. I can't even think about what I have to do now. My friend says to print out the entire thing and see if I can recover things from Snapchat. From what I understand I can't, unless I have her phone. My plan is to see the lawyer today, I'm paying a ridiculous amount to jump in her appointment line. Get the ball rolling and hopefully have a plan of action from her. I really want to book a flight and follow my wife to the hotel she's staying at and catch her in the act. I have access to her hotel booking options and have put myself as a contact person, so I can get a room key without alerting her. I think I'm just going to log onto the messaging apps when I get into town and watch it happen in real time. If I could get the papers ready in time I'd hand them to her, instead I'm just going to hand her the printouts. It's a 600 page PDF. His wife accepted my friend request. I am debating sending everything now. I am seething. I just don't want to lose any advantage. I'm going to fly there Monday afternoon, log in and see what they've talked about, get a room key to my wife's room, and drop off the package in her room with my wedding ring. I'm going to sit in the bar and watch my phone blow up. I'm going to call the AP and tell him to meet me in the lobby slash bar and to bring my wife down. Then tell him that a similar package has been sent by certified mail to his home address to his wife. As well as a Facebook message that I plan on hitting send on as I tell him. It feels petty and weak, I want to rage and scream, but I'm helpless. This morning all I could do was give her a peck on the cheek goodbye, I really can't stand to look her in the eye. I somehow have to get through the weekend. I guess I'm asking, is my spiteful, hate-fueled plan worth it? I just want to inflict pain at this point. I want to hurt her emotionally. I feel eviscerated and emasculated. I will not entertain an apology. This is the one act that is unforgivable. It takes so many steps to cheat on someone. They all can be stopped until the sin is complete. Then it is done. Should I just confront her tonight? Or catch her? I don't think I'll update. I'm truly thinking about never using social media again. And only being with a partner that has a similar outlook moving forward. ETA, I found the special toy. Keep in mind we have a chest full of adult fun devices. It was already in our carry-on. It's one of those remote control vibrators. The ones that can be controlled by an app. It looks expensive. I meet with the lawyer in 90 minutes. Update, I have no clue how to post an update. I'm just editing my post. I met with the lawyer. She was actually kind, and I dare say compassionate with me. She told me to point blank that her job was to represent me in this fight for my future, and my job in all of this was to tell her the complete truth and not make her job harder. I went to Kinko and printed the file out. Cost $534 for color because I wanted to have the pictures pop shout out to Chris at Kinko for not making a scene when the nudes started coming out. He asked what it was all about, so, I told him, he was taken aback, but shook my hand and said sorry. I went home and crashed for about 3 hours and STBXW came home around 1930, the usual time. The lawyer said to forget any Hollywood confrontation in a hotel bar that it would look pretty crazy and not becoming at all. So I'm sorry to all of those people that wanted the high drama. She's right ultimately. There are two routes to take with divorce, contested or non-contested. She said I would have to notify my STBXW that I have retained counsel and in order to proceed my STBXW would have to either contest the divorce or we would go through mediation and file from there. So. She got home about two hours ago. I asked her if there was anything going on that she wanted to talk about. She said nothing other than the election. 
she then asked what was bothering me. I wanted to cry, but, truthfully I cried out. I said I was curious as to why she had a remote control vibrator in her luggage. The look on her face was actually more telling than anything I've ever seen. She looked panicked and pale. She began to breathe faster, and sweat. I asked why she would have something like that. Who had the code and the app to it? She stammered and the tears began. As I pulled out my three file folders worth of text exchanges I asked if the AP wife would have it. She cried and pleaded that she could explain. I said she had five minutes to do it. Of course, she couldn't. I told her what my attorney told me to tell her. I also told her to leave. She screamed it was her house too. I calmly told her that may be, but, I would be notifying everyone about her affair and betrayal. That even the girls will know. Or, she can leave now and find living arrangements for the time being. Hell, she'll be at her work conference for a week. She was speechless. I calmly pulled up Facebook and showed her the AP's wife. I said do you want me to tell her or are you going to do it right now? Tears and moaning and pleading with I love you and it wasn't supposed to go this far. Then my favorite you can't do this. I said well it looks like I'm doing it, as I sent the AP wife a message with the file of their escapades on it. I prefaced it with apologies and a brief explanation. I haven't heard back from her. I leafed through the stacks of paper and started reading random excerpts out loud to my STBXW. I just wish we could spend the day attached to each other. Just you inside of me. You feel so much more intense than any other woman I've ever been with. She is still sobbing and asking to talk about us. She says our marriage can withstand her mistake. I told her I would never forgive her, her word is shit, and that she threw away the last 17 years. I'm still entertaining the whole tell HR thing and I am going to tell everyone about her decision to end our marriage by cheating. Thank you to everyone who responded. I feel bad I couldn't respond to all the PMs and responses. I have a therapy appointment scheduled for Tuesday. I kind of feel extremely elated, I'm shaking, and incredibly low right now, I kinda wanna die. The house is pretty quiet except for her crying and moaning. I told her to not come back after her trip. I'm currently sending friend requests and trying to get everyone on my page, I'm just going to send it to everyone that way. I am going to wait until the morning to call the girls. I raised them from when they were 11 and 6. They are women now 28 and 23. I don't know what to tell them, or how to handle them. Update. I need to send a letter of thanks to Dyson. I discovered my wife, 49F, of 17 years, an 18-month affair when I updated our fan filter on the app it uses. So. I have received nearly 1,000 requests for some type of update or information on what's going on in my pain and hate-filled life. My new therapist said to go ahead and do it. It will help me recenter and focus. To those who kept saying that's not how Snapchat works yes, you are correct, she had that running in the background, it was WhatsApp. I don't really give a shit, I saw it. I again need to thank Dyson for their app and the kick-ass fan I got from my brother-in-law for Christmas. Here goes. I'm going to give a deeper background on our situation to help with some perspective on why I feel the way I do. My original post was pretty much a stream of consciousness and felt as disjointed as I did then. I went to college in Las Vegas in the mid-90s. I graduated in 1999. I had a blast there. I got around, fucked, it was during this formative time I decided to never marry, it was slash as an outdated concept that essentially removes your agency, and, I definitely did not want children. When I graduated with my degree in nursing, I quickly excelled in cardiovascular intensive care. I moved home to Texas in 2001 and pursued my master's degree to be an advanced practice RN slash nurse practitioner with a specialization in CV surgery. While I was achieving this, I decided to pursue medical school and shifted coursework to fill in what I needed to apply. It was then that I met my STBXW. She was a short chubby, 
I believe the kids today would say thick, red-headed firecracker. We met in a code. It was intense, both the attraction and the dating. We were saying I love you within three months. She was a mother of two, remember, I wanted to be child-free, and had been divorced for about two years. She was just getting out of an on-again off-again relationship when we met. We dated for about two years and she slowly introduced her daughters to my age, 11, 6. She sat me down one night and gave me a pretty heartfelt but pragmatic talk about us or where we were at the time, and what she needed slash expected from me, or any other partner. Essentially she said it was time to either get married or move on. I was still pretty anti-marriage and she respected that. She was telling me this to give me a chance to think about us and what the future looked like. She had a pretty good point in that we were living together, 8 months, and even had each other as persons to notify in an emergency, she joked that all that was missing was having each other on our insurance. It was a good honest talk and we agreed that we would continue on for a bit more, but, I would ultimately have to make the decision. Two weeks later, I had an acceptance letter to a medical school about two hours away. I was ecstatic and crushed at the same time. I had just had my 26th birthday and was about to accomplish a huge life goal. Then I realized I'd never see her or the girls. My self-doubt got the better of me. Being a medical student, then resident, with a fellowship was going to be a roughly seven-year process, all the while. I could not make the money or support the lifestyle we had grown accustomed to. I thought about the prospect of at least seven years of loans, debt, and work, and losing her. So I declined and switched back to a master's in nursing administration. We got married in July of 2003 it was an intimate and personal ceremony with just immediate family and friends. While my parents adore the girls, rightly so, they have always been standoffish with STBXW. On Monday when I told my parents what was happening, and that there was a real possibility the girls could stop being as prevalent in their life as they have been, they told me that they felt that STBXW was damaged goods being married prior to and forcing me to compromise. That really hit home, and to a certain extent, they were slasher correct. After I graduated I didn't want to be a manager or director. I'm a hands-on guy who likes taking care of patients. The hospital I was at offered a certification in ECMO and a perfusionist credential. It was a highly competitive application, but I got in. For the past 11 years, I have been doing ECMO and all things related. I have had a blast and it has been challenging as well as heartbreaking at times. My STBXW decided about 5 years ago that being an RN on the floor had run its course and she wanted a more 9 to 5 job that did not involve patience or drama. She got on through a friend at a multi-state legal consultancy that specializes in medical legal suites. She abstracts data from patient charts and presents it in the manner requested. So that's the setup. On Saturday morning D-Day plus 2, I only slept a few hours. I had dark, disturbing thoughts regarding my future in life. I had, still do, thoughts and scenarios of death and violence upon them and myself. I was in the kitchen making breakfast, eggs, and toast, when she walked into the kitchen still bleary-eyed. She asked if I would make her some. I threw it in the trash in front of her. I then proceeded to load up my record player and play music from my youth at an uncomfortable volume to prevent her from trying to talk to me. Real mature I know. I began pain shopping big time, reading the printout in chronological order. I do and I don't recommend it, by the afternoon I was done with Black Flag and Danzig, and I was listening to Torch slash Breakup songs by Chris Isaac and Ray LaMontagne. She approached again. This time she was almost indignant. Asking what purpose notifying the AP's wife served. I stared at her for what felt like an inappropriate amount of time, a bit dumbfounded. I told her point blank that at least she, AP's wife, would get the chance to make an informed decision about her future instead of compromising and sacrificing for someone who would betray them so selfishly. I guess my message to the AP's wife was received and things were not good for him. 
she sat down on the couch and began to tear up and sob. I told her I was crying out, or more correctly I was so numb that I would do that later when I was done doing what needed to be done. She asked timidly, all indignation slash bravado gone from her voice, what else do I have to do? I told her to ruin your life and give you the pain I have now. I told her that if she had any respect for me or love for me, she would open her phone and show me everything. She refused and said that it didn't matter and all I would do was hold it against her. I said, there was a part of me, the completionism in me, that wanted to know. She refused and went to the guest bedroom. I found her HR and new hire paperwork from her company. They have a corporate compliance line and I called and left a detailed message. They, STBXW and AP, had discussed client information that also had protected health information with an unsecured, non-approved messaging system. I also informed them that she was his acting supervisor on two projects over a certain time that corresponded with sexually inappropriate messages. Lastly, I said that they both used their subsidized phones to transmit pornographic materials, pics, sexting, videos. That was a big no as well. My whole life, I have viewed myself as a peaceful and rational man. This has broken that part of me. I don't know where all of this anger has come from, I am somewhat worried. Like, will it stop? I know in the long run, to get over this I will have to accept her apology and forgive her for her mistakes, I just don't know if I am capable, and it is worrying to me. That evening I continued to notify family and friends of the situation and her actions. I called a physician friend and requested a favor for a checkup and an STD check. He had questions. I answered. My eyes got heavy around 8. Sunday D-Day plus 3, I decided to drive to see the girls. They are about 3 hours away. The youngest is still in college for another semester, maybe longer, thanks to 2020. I have been having pretty extreme feelings about them since this began. I have formed a respectful, friendly relationship with them, but not much of a fatherly one. The oldest especially. We are cordial, but, there's always that you not my dad vibe between us. The youngest, not so much, but, when they are together, it gets more prevalent. I left early Sunday around 5 am, and arrived at their condo, their father pays for it, just after 845. I had colaches and good coffee for them. They were immediately worried about their mother before I said anything. I told them point blank the situation and that their mother would probably be moving in the next three to six months. I can honestly say it was best to do and say this in person. I told them everything. They were disappointed in her. I then told them that I wasn't there to get them to take a side, but they were adults in a special circumstance within our relationship, and if they decided they didn't want to interact or have a relationship with me that was okay, I would be somewhat let down but also relieved. I told them, however, that our relationship, or lack thereof should not interfere with their grandparents, my parents. They both agreed that they would like to keep in touch with their grandparents. I left there around 11 and headed home. I stopped at my best friend's house and cried a little. I had essentially helped to raise them as best I could. Their father was absent for most of their childhood and started another family six hours away. My best friend decided that I had drunk enough the past 72 hours, and I needed to sleep. I crashed in his place that night. I had noticed STBXW had been blowing my phone up after I had left the girl's place. Oh well, I was too tired and in too dark a place to care. Monday D-Day plus 4, I arrived home around 8 and noticed her Porsche was still there. I thought for a moment that she Ubered or Waze to the airport. No, no she had not. She was up and had breakfast made, she asked me to sit down and eat with her. I did. She asked how it tasted, and I told her like static. I told her I've had a hard time tasting and feeling anything other than bitterness and anger, for the past five days. She had called in sick at work and did not leave for her quarterly meeting. She tried to start talking about how worried she was for me and that she loved me so much. 
She had gotten a call from her oldest yesterday around noon and they were deeply disturbed by her behavior. I laughed, as I did it, I realized it was not a funny laugh. It had a manic kind of feel to it and took me aback. I said oh, you love me so much you have a year and a half affair behind my back. You love me so much you fuck some other married man. You love me so much that you pissed away nearly half of my life because. She had never given me a reason as to why she did it. I told her that, and it made it so much worse. I went to the liquor service and pulled out the bottle. The bottle was an 18-year Glenfiddich that my grandfather bought for us when we got married. It has been slash was our tradition to have a small sip on our anniversary night and remember that things get better with time and patience. I chugged the remainder of it. It was about a third of the bottle that was left. I said, sorry I didn't offer her any, because she did not deserve any. I went to the bedroom and began pulling all of the pictures off of the wall that had us or her in them. I placed them on the kitchen table. She had left. My attorney or rather her paralegal called to notify me the petition for divorce was ready, and I needed to sign off on it before it could be filed and STBXW would be served within 10 business days. I read it quickly, while very buzzed on premium scotch. He signed it and pressed send. I also got a message from the AP's wife. She reluctantly thanked me for this horrible but good revelation. She declined to speak with me but wanted to message me to tell me. She found texts and videos with other women besides my STBXW. She kicked him out and was going to an attorney soon. They live in California, he's fucked. I proceeded to listen to music and have a few more drinks. I fell asleep around 4 in the afternoon. I heard her come home around 10, she saw the pile of pictures and things that had at one time meant something to us. She began sobbing and asking me to talk to her, I only asked one question why. She kept saying she didn't know. I called her vile things and said that she made so many decisions to get to just the first text. It was she who started it. I was pretty loose with my tongue due to being drunk. I laughed at her and started taking off my clothes and said you threw away this pointing to my body, I'm going to get shit for it, but, I'm 6 feet 4 inches and weigh 200 hashtag, up until last week I still jogged and lifted weights 4 times a week, for some pot bellied needle dick guy that wasn't going to do anything for her. I went to my room and had a shower. When I got out, she was in the bed naked. She had lit some candles and begged me to fuck her. I turned on my camera and told her to repeat what she said, I thank everyone who mentioned doing this, just in case, for whatever reason, my erection did not do a good job of convincing her that I didn't want to. So, I did it. I was not kind. I put her in uncomfortable positions and pounded her. I told her I wanted anal, and I wanted to hear her beg me for it. I recorded it all. I felt so many mixed emotions after. I love her, and I am indifferent to her, I hate her, and I think nothing of her. I want her and feel like I need her, but it hurts me to think of us anymore. We fell asleep together. I woke up kind of hungover and had a hard time looking at myself in the mirror. Tuesday D-Day plus 5, therapy was a two and a half hour session, unbeknownst to me, she followed me there and wanted to know what I was doing. I told her I was getting some therapy for the emotional trauma I had after realizing I had thrown away most of my life on someone who couldn't even give me a reason as to why she would cheat on me. I was a little loud and teary-eyed. My soon-to-be new therapist saw most of the exchange. I called her horrible names and told her I wished her dead. Needless to say, my session was intense. He prescribed some sedatives for me and I had another shorter appointment scheduled on Thursday. We discussed my anger and betrayal, my emasculation, and my fear of the future. I explained I was terrified of the unknown. Last week I felt like a complete man. I had a vision and goals, I also had a partner to deal with any issues and obstacles. Now, I am a ship without a rudder or mast. I feel no sense of direction, power, or means to get away from this. 
he started explaining the why that I wanted to know. It isn't a single question. It is a series of questions that is pretty interesting. I suppose you can apply it to any behavior that you want to explain the motivation behind it. He said instead I should calmly ask my STBXW what within herself gave her permission to do this to me. There were several more to follow up with, but this is what stuck out the most. I told him about the sex, he recommended that I lay out explicit ground rules regarding our physical relationship. He ultimately recommended that I don't do it anymore, it would confuse and exacerbate things tremendously unless reconciliation was my goal. I cried, I raged. I left exhausted. STBXW was still outside waiting for me. I walked past her and didn't respond to her questions and pleading. I got a call from the physician's office to get tested and went to that appointment. I told him the short version. He recommended to stop drinking and take the sedatives cautiously. I went home and proceeded to continue removing my things from the house and boxing them up. I have decided I will move out. I called work and requested a face-to-face -face meeting. The thought of working or concentrating on legitimate life and death issues is not possible in my current state of mind. I drove to the administrative building at the hospital, met with the team, and formally gave my six weeks resignation. I have such a niche, specialized job that six weeks is kind of a minimum courtesy. I put it succinctly that my STBXW's actions had caused a stressful home life, and I would be a detriment to patients, the team, and myself if I continued to remain in this area. I have decided to move away. Far away. I got home after picking up some groceries. It has been about a week since I have had more than a mouthful of food and have existed on liquor and not much else. I took both my therapist and physician friend's advice and decided to make some food and stop drinking. She was home, sitting in the darkened living room drinking wine. She had organized the pictures and was looking through them. She had put on makeup and was wearing a date night dress. She had been crying a lot. Her makeup was in bad shape. She got up and tried to embrace me. I pushed her gently away and made a production of pulling out my phone and hitting record. She started crying again. She told me the AP's wife had called her and told her that he had had other women as well as her. She said that she was so much the fool and every derogatory name I had called her was right. She begged me to consider us. I said why bother, she didn't when she betrayed me. I told her I was sorry that her lies caught her, but I felt that she was sorry she got caught, not remorseful for what she did to me. I told her I felt she was sorry that she was going to have to start over and that she was more upset about that than losing any love she had for me. I said that she abandoned her love for me or us two years ago when she decided to do this. I kept piling it on her. I informed her of my call to the corporate compliance line and the specific rules she broke. I didn't raise my voice or act angry. I was shaking a bit, but it was like everything was leaving me in a rush. I felt elated and so low at the same time. I felt empty when I was done. I put up the few groceries I had bought and made a small sandwich, then went to bed. She was there again. I pulled out my phone and told her with the recorder what my therapist had talked about in regard to sex. Keep in mind in 17 years, I cannot recall a time when I've refused or declined sex from her. I asked her to leave and sleep in the guest bedroom. She refused. I said, fine, I would then. Wednesday D-Day plus 6, I woke up and she was curled up next to me. I removed myself and did some light exercises. I have been working on my resume and getting applications out. I might be working in Seattle by the end of the year. I love my parents and will miss being 20 minutes away from them, especially as they are becoming elderly. I can't stay in this city. The thought of running into her after this is over is not something I want to entertain. I want to be free and have no reminders of my sense of loss and my lifetime of compromise. It was a pretty blah day and it rained off and on for most of it. I met up with my best friend and gave him a rundown over an early dinner. 
we decided not to drink. My attorney said that my moving away will not affect the outcome of the financials. I am going to live off my PTO until the end of October and use half of our liquid savings to relocate and settle. I feel empty and I am trying to laugh at his funny jokes, but it's an effort. I keep finding myself in a deep emptiness that has such a powerful pull. I have never thought about ending my own life, but for the past few days slash nights, I've had daydreams of what it would be like if I wasn't here. I am going to tell my therapist tomorrow. STBXW has been going to the library, I've been watching through Google and reading relationship books. I have been reading Chump Lady. It is great stuff. She got a call from her work. I eavesdropped on a small portion of it, but I know she has a meeting tomorrow, despite her claiming to be sick. She was in bed again just like the past few nights. I am so conflicted, I just want to feel something, but I feel so little but hate and resentment for her that the only sex I want is sadistic. I'll admit that during the abusive sex we had on Monday I felt almost a runner's high, but... There was a crash, and the next day I was angry at myself. I am doubting myself a small amount in regards to not wanting her back. I know she fucked up huge, but I don't know if I can forget it, or forgive it. I am a tangled mess. I told her the ground rules, with my phone recording, in regard to sex. I told her that it did not indicate reconciliation or some covert signal that I wanted that. I told her this was probably hysterical bonding and not healthy. I told her that I was going to not be gentle nor care about her feelings or needs during it. She was teary-eyed and nodded understanding. She quietly said that she deserved it. She then rolled over and got on all fours. Thursday D-Day plus 7, I woke up with her spooning me. I lay there for a while and heard her breathing change pattern. I could feel her looking at me. I asked with my back turned what her meeting was going to be about. She said it was an HR representative and it was probably going to be bad. I said yup. She asked what she could do to make us right or equal again. I said nothing. She offered an open marriage on my end, she would not pursue anyone, but I could. I chuckled, no. I don't trust her. She said that was fair. We had this conversation with my back to her, it was easier than looking at her. I get mad when I see her face. I asked what I did in this marriage that made her so unhappy she did this. She said I was beyond great. I chuckled again, well obviously that doesn't matter. She said it was an adventure as she lived off of the rush, she didn't realize until it was way too late that if she got caught or if something went wrong everyone would be hurt, she said it was a huge relief and an unforgettable pain when I confronted her. I got up and made breakfast. I went to my therapist and told him my plan with work and already had responses to my applications. I told him everything about STBXW and the sex. We discussed my suicidal thoughts and talked about the process involved with them. Again, he wasn't judging, he just wanted me not to get confused, or if I did not understand stop and process. It was only a 1 hour, 55 minute, session and I felt that weird calm again. Like nothing matters for now. Everything just is. When I got home she was sitting in the living room. She told me that she was fired for breach of protocol with client information and violation of the data security protocols. I said, well that's too bad. I exercised and made a nice dinner, she joined me. We didn't say much. While we were sitting in the living room she told me that AP had been fired as well. I said good. She told me she had had no contact with him in 5 days. I asked why not. They were both free now. She could fly out to her soul mate and have all the fun they wanted now. She said I was the only one she wanted. I said Inno, you had me all of me, and it still wasn't enough. I told her that in the nearly 20 years of work, in our relationship, I had been approached and hit on too many times to count. I managed to not fall in love or fuck anyone else, now, I am so bitter and angry because of the compromises I made. She asked what compromises. 
I told her. I wanted to go to me. I am going to walk away from this. I feel like it is starting to constantly remind me of things. I cannot thank those kind people I could chat with and who shared their pain and stories that have helped me. This has been on a whole, a good thing for me to do, but I keep replaying things and feelings I'd rather just walk away from. I remain confused about what I want. I don't know if I will ever be 100% about anything with her ever again. I have bi-weekly appointments for the next four weeks with my therapist.